Greetings and God bless you. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Happy Sunday to everyone who's watching us on this virtual space. Welcome to our virtual worship experience. We're getting ready to go back and do retro worship one more time. We're going to the sanctuary and to the archives of some of our wonderful experiences here at Unity Baytown. Uh, we want to thank you for your prayers and your patience. Do know that the church is still being repaired and we're making sure that everything is getting back to normal. And by normal, I mean better than what it was. And so we thank God for the care of the deacons and the electricians and the carpenters who are making sure that our building is safe and secure and ready for return uh, when it's time to come back. But in the meantime, we're going to do what we do best, and that's worship the Lord in any avenue that we can. Do know before we go into the worship service that you're able to pay your tithes and offerings online. Some information is about to appear on the screen. You can go to the website where you can click on online giving. The, the, uh, the, the, the information is safe and secure. You can also uh, send your tithes via mail. Please do not bring your tithes to the campus, whereas the campus is still closed because of COVID-19. However, you can send your tithes and offerings to the address on your screen. Also, you can text to give. The instructions are there right there on, on the screen. Please dial that number and uh, follow the instructions and your tithes and offerings will be received, recorded, and God will reward you just the same. Just before we get ready to go into worship, I want to pray with you and pray for you. Pray that God will hear and that's our prayers on today. So much is going on in the world today and we want to talk to our God who's able to hear and answer prayer. So let's go to God in prayer. God, we come before you now in the name of Jesus. Before we ask you for anything, we thank you for everything. We acknowledge that you are God and you are God by yourself. Now, God, as we come to this point of worship, we thank you for this opportunity to call on your name, to talk to you. We thank you, God, that you hear us and you answer us in your own time, in your own power. So now, God, I pray for the person who's watching right now that you would give them the desires of their heart, grant their needs. Also, God, do only what you can do, and that's be God. We thank you for the miracles, signs, and wonders that you've given to us in time past. And we know, God, that if you did it before, you can do it again. Watch over our children while they're uh, in virtual school and those that went in person. Look down on our teachers and our administrators. Look down, Father, on our government locally, regionally, even federally. God, we pray that you would watch the hand of those that lead this, this government, God. Give them direction. Give them insight. We pray now, Father, that you would watch over the church, the universal church, God that you will look down on the leaders of the church. Help us to be the leaders that you want us to be. Watch over lay persons, God, that give administrative oversight over the things of God. God, we pray that you'll forgive us of our sins. Wash us clean. Make us into the people that you want us to be. God, we lift our petitions up before you right now. But ultimately, God, we want you to have your way. Thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God, lead us and guide us. Show us what to do, where to go, and how to do it, God. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And it is so, and it cannot be otherwise. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you and keep is our prayer. Listen, we get ready to go into worship. I'll be back at the end of the message. Somebody may want to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Enjoy this worship, and I'll see you at the end of the message. I feel yeah, no. 
by praising his name. Yeah, yeah. I feel like praising his name. chapter 40 Isaiah chapter 40 when you have it say amen Amen. Isaiah chapter 40 Um, meet me at verse number 28 Isaiah asked a pertinent question and I'm going to ask it from the King James Version it says has thou not known Has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary, there is no searching of his understanding. I want to preach this passage as, have you heard? Have you heard? Yes, sir. Thank you. You may be 
be seated. Yes, sir. Thank you, ushers. Won't you do me a favor and tell somebody, ask them the question, neighbor? Hey, have you heard? Hey, my God. Man, should I live my bread alone by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God? It is said medically that when one of our senses are become debilitated, that the other senses heighten up. For example, if you lose your sense of hearing, then all the other sights or senses kick in. Sadly, that should not be the case when it comes to the body of Christ. Because when it comes to us, we don't operate in senses. So much so that many of us um, have chosen that we want to see God. But not only see God, but whenever it comes to a position in our life, we want to see God do it. That's why many of us get frustrated, aggravated, because we want to see God do it. But the common mistake with many of us is that while we're trying to see God, we fail to hear God. My brothers and sisters, may I submit and suggest to you today that it is not always what we see, but it is what we hear. Because what we see can sometimes discourage us. What we see can dissuade us, it can disrupt us, it can disturb us. And we have to come to the realization that seeing is not always believing. Because we don't know where the wind is going. We don't know where the wind is coming from. But we do know that the wind exists. That's why I told you when we were singing the song earlier, you can't see God. But you do know that he is there. Because even if you don't feel him, if you linger long enough, you can hear him talk to you. So I want to suggest, my brothers and sisters, that we learn how to move past our vision and learn how to get to our hearing. For faith does not come by seeing. Faith does not come by walking, although we do walk by faith. Faith does not come by smelling. It does not come by tasting, even though David tells us to taste and see that the Lord is good. But my brothers and sisters, Paul tells us that faith comes by and hearing by the word of God. And so today I want to encourage us today to hear what God is saying in the midst of our circumstances. Because sometimes God is not trying to show us something. He's trying to tell us something. You, you, you watch the color purple long enough to know that when Sheila was at the, when, when Shug was at the juke joint and trying to sing her song, that was a song that resonated in her spirit since Jen. And that song is God's trying to tell you something. Won't you help me tell somebody God's trying to tell you something? We come, my brothers and sisters, to this book of, of, of Isaiah. It is a prophetic book. The Bi Some theologians will say that it is a miniature Bible because it is 66 chapters, just like the Bible is 66 books. In this prophetic book of Isaiah, we discover that the people of God are now in exile. They are on the cusp of the end of being in Babylonian captivity, but they cannot see their end. That's why they're complaining. That's why they're aggravated. That's why they're whining because they don't know when God is about to bring them out. But the Lord sends Isaiah to tell them that you're only in this for just a little while longer. Where you are is not going to last always. The reason why they're tripping is because God never gave them a time limit as to when they would come out of where they are. And so many times we ask God, when are you going to bring me out? How long do I have to stay in this storm? How long do I have to be sick? How long do I have to be broke? How long do I have to be destitute? And God never gives us the answer as to when he's going to come out. He, he does tell us that weeping endures for a night and joy comes in the morning, but he never tells us what time of night we're in. And so he says for us to keep holding on because eventually he's going to bring us out. So the Lord sends Isaiah to remind the people of God that y'all have sense, y'all, y'all, it, it looks as if you have some sort of amnesia. It looks
looks as if you forgot about the God you serve. You think that because you're in a circumstance that God has become absent from you. No, God has not become absent. He's become silent. And sometimes we get mad with God because God becomes silent where we are. But just because God becomes silent don't mean he's absent. Which means he sees you where you are. He may not be talking to you, but he wants to remind you that although you are in a circumstance, he's still God and God all by himself. So Isaiah says, y'all forgot who this God is. So he asked them a question. Have you not known? Is this your first time dealing with your God? Do you not know the God you serve? Do you not know how powerful he is? He's so powerful that he is not only the creator, watch this, he's also the curator. I went too fast, let me try it again. He is not only the creator, he's the curator. Makes sense of what you're saying. He not only makes it, but he also maintains it. You missed your shout cue. God is saying to you, everything that has happened to you, I not only sign my name on it, but I got my hand in it. So even though it looks like God is not there, God has got his hand on every sickness. God has got his hand on every paycheck. God has got his hand on every marital problem. God has got his hand on every wayward child. And although your hand may not be able to hold it, God says, I've been holding it even before the problem ever got to you. about the omnipotency of God. He, he said, do you not know? Do you not understand about our God? He is the creator and the curator. There are several things about him, and I'm going to stay in verse 28. I promise I'm not going any further. He says, I need you to understand something about your God where, where it would cause you to be reminded that although you're in a circumstance, your God is right there with you. Here's the first thing you need to understand. God, God wants us to understand through Isaiah that number one, God does not fizzle out. He does not fizzle out. Where are you, Pastor? I'm in the first few verses. He says he does not faint. That word faint literally means he does not wear out. He does not fizzle. He does not walk. He does, he's not a flash in the pan. He's not fly by night. Watch this. He is the same God that saw the problem before you ever heard about the problem. He is the same God that had strength for your good days and strength for your bad days. People are like Alka-Seltzer, not God. People are like Alka-Seltzer. As soon as you drop them in some water, they start to fizzle out. But you know what I like about God? God specializes in heated situations. God specializes in red seas. He specializes in dens of lions. He specializes in fiery furnaces. He specializes in prison cells. If you really want to see God work, go through a hard time. If you really want to see God come through, watch him when your back is against the wall. Because when other people walk out, God has never left you, nor has he forsaken you. And when the rubber meets the road, he'll still be there, even when nobody else is. He, he, there's no fatigue with God. He does not get tired. He does not wear out. But not only is there no fatigue with God, but there is no flight with God. I'm still in the first point, which means that just because there's pressure, he doesn't turn tail and run. God said there's nothing that I've seen that has ever weighed me down. I've seen a bird, I've seen a red sea, didn't do nothing for me. I 
I've seen a lion's kid ain't do nothing for me. I've seen a giant by the name of Goliath punch you up to get beat down. I've seen the lightning flashing done nothing for me. I've seen a Jezebel stand before me and she's dead and gone. I've seen a Pharaoh stand before me. He ain't nothing but a memory. I've even seen Pharisees come against me and I'm still undisputed and I am victorious. There's nothing that has come against me that has been able to overcome me because there are other gods but no other god is before me. That's why Isaiah says in 54, 17, yeah, the weapon is going to form but the weapon is not going to prosper because they don't understand that I am God. God all by myself. God, God is not fake. He does not flat. But watch this. God is faithful. God says, watch this. Even though that is an issue, I am still the God that is with you in the issue. Even though that is a circumstance, I am still faithful. Watch this. To do everything I told you I would do. Even when you and I faithful. God is faithful. I know you're perfect. You are sinless. You do everything God wants you to do. That is not my testimony. But I wish I had at least eight of us in here who can testify that I don't pray all the time, but God still answers my prayer. I don't do everything God wants me to do, but he still supplies all of my needs. I don't love my brother and sister the way I'm supposed to, but he still loves me, uh, not because of, uh, but in spite of. That's why the lamentation says, uh, it is of the Lord's mercies. Uh, we are not consumed uh, because his compassions fail not. They are renewed every morning. Here it is. Uh, great is the I need somebody here that knows in the midst of my foolishness, in the midst of my fickleness, I got a God that has always been faithful. God cannot, God cannot fizzle out. Yeah. But number two, our God cannot fall out. It says he's neither faith, neither is he weary. Yeah. He's, he's not weary because, number one, he is the wind. Hallelujah. That, that, that word weary literally means you lose your breath. You gasp for air. But watch this. I love this because God cannot gasp for air. And the reason why he can't gasp for air, because he is air. I need somebody to talk back to me. Don't you remember in Genesis chapter 2 when he created man and man was laying down on the earth, but he was laying without something and the Bible says that God breathed into him the breath of life and man became a living soul. That breath is the air and the wind. And some of us in here, we need a second wind, a third wind, a fourth wind, a fifth wind, an earth wind. And anyway, we need another wind. And God says, I'm so much God that I am the wind that, that you need on the inside of you. I can't get tired. And that's why I can't nobody tire me out. Because I am the wind that gives everybody else life. He cannot fall out because he's the wind. But also he cannot fall out because he's not weak. Because when you lose your air, you get tired. When you lose your air, you become fatigued. But God says, my enemies can testify. I'm a lot of things, but weak ain't one of them. I am strong and mighty. I am mighty in power. I wish I, wish I had somebody here who will stop looking at me so funny. Acting as if your God is weak. Understand it. If you have a God with a big belly and a bald head that you gotta put fruit in front of, y'all ain't talking back to me. I, I understand if you serve a God that you gotta turn to the east and pray to him. I can understand if you serve a God that got eyes but can't see, ears but can't hear, a mouth but can't talk, hands but can't touch, lips but can't talk. But I serve a God that I. 
me there. I ain't got to worry about him being deaf because he hears me every time I pray. I ain't got to turn to the east to talk to him because no matter where I turn, I run into him. He's everywhere at the same time. Is there anybody here who can testify? I serve a strong God. And the reason why I know I serve a strong God is because when I become weak, he becomes strong. It's made perfect in my weakness. He cannot fail because he is the weak. He cannot fail because he is not weak. But number three, he cannot fail because he is the word. Creation hinges on his word. When I alluded to the creation, out of all things God created. He never created anything except man with his hands. Everything else, he spoke. Y'all ain't, come on, help me preach this. God didn't have to use his hands with nothing else, but when he said, let there be, watch this, he said, let there be, and when he said, let there be, he never gave a time limit for it to be. shot all by myself, which means that once God got it started, it never stopped. So if God said, let there be blessings, then your blessings don't stop. If God said, let there be healing, then your healing don't stop. If God said promotion, then your promotion don't stop. Because when God puts it in start, can't nobody stop it. Your success hinges on the word. Your your deliverance hinges on the word. Your peace hinges on the word. Your breakthrough hinges on the word. That's why you need God to speak to you. Because man shall not live by bread alone. But by everyone, I need somebody here that need God to keep on talking to you. If God don't speak, then everything else is in jeopardy. That's why it is important for us to hold on to what God says. Don't you hear him say in Matthew chapter 5 verse 16, before one jot or one tittle of my word fails, heaven and earth, I need a Bible in here. will pass away. So if God said, God's going to hold account to himself what he said. Because if he said it and he don't bring it to pass, he's alive. And the Bible says that God, come on, talk to me. He's not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. So whatever God told you, even if it don't happen yet, just know that the word of God said it, it's going to happen. It don't, I don't know when, I don't know where, that someday soon it's going to happen. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. God cannot. God cannot fizzle out. God cannot fall out. But can I get out of here? We got to go to the But lastly, God cannot be figured out. There is no search. In verse 28, you close your Bible. It says that is no searching of his understanding, Doc. Of his understanding. My God. Because God is so strong, his enemy has tried to discredit him. So much so that he tries to discredit his written word. Even so much to the point where they go to say that God is not real. And so you have people who go to investigate God. Not to get to know him, but to discredit him. You've seen people like that all the time. They'll say, if your God is this, then why is this? If your God is this, then why is this? But if you notice, every time God has somebody who can come against him, 
people leave more confused when they try to investigate him because the one thing you cannot do is uh, you cannot figure God out watch this God wants us to know him but not know him in order to destroy who he is because the creation cannot destroy the creator He, 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 he says there's no searching I gotta go of his understanding so you cannot check his intelligence you can't figure God you cannot figure the deep things of God and if anybody say they know all about God they lie Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 that we know in part come on talk to me and we prophesy in part need somebody who can testify just what I think I done learned about God he shows me something else that's why I like reading his word because every time I crack my Bible open I find out something better about God and that's why they say every day with Jesus sweeter is sweeter than the day before and you can test to somebody who tried to discredit God you can try to discredit him all you want to but you can't figure him out yourself as a matter of fact you can't figure out his creation how do you know you can't figure it out you cannot figure out how a brown cow eats green grass and produces white milk if you can't figure that out naturally you sure can't figure this out spiritually how can the Lord take a black soul wash it in red blood and it come out whiter than snow I need somebody here who can testify I can't figure him out but I'm just glad I know him You got to check. You can't check his intelligence. But number two, you cannot calibrate his infinity. We, we trying to figure out. I, I, hear, I hear little babies and kids ask me the question all the time. Pastor, uh, how old is God? Uh, when did God start? I love those questions kids ask me because I like to answer them as a resident theologian. And uh, I, I like to tell them that God never got started. Because before start got started, God had already started. God started, start before started, start. I know that went over your head. As a matter of fact, he began the beginning. And watch this, he ended the beginning before the end ever ended. Did that go over your head? The Bible says it like this, from everlasting, Talk back to me. To everlasting, uh, he is God. So other words, uh, before your mom and daddy came along, uh, he was already going. Uh, before big mom and papa and my dear was ever around, uh, he was going. Uh, and when we're dead and gone, uh, and ain't nobody ever thinking about us, uh, he's still going to be God. We try to put God in a box. We try to put him in Kronos, our time. But you can't box God in time because he operates in eternity. Maybe that's why Big Mama said you can't hurry God. I need a Bible reader here. You just got to wait. You got to trust and give him time. No matter how long it takes. He's a God. You can't hurry. He'll be there. Don't you worry. Finish it. He may not come when you want him. But he's always on time. Not your time. But it's in his time. And you got to get your time in his time. Because when due season comes, he'll be on time. You can't check his intelligence. You cannot calibrate his infinity. Oh yeah. But I gotta go John. Number two, you must confide in his intentions. You gotta confide in his intentions. Watch this. God not gonna tell you why he does everything. But what he is gonna do is this. He gonna say, I need you to do something that your flesh don't want you to do. And that's trust me when you can't trace me. 
what, what I'm going to need you to do, unity, God is saying, I need you to confide in me without comprehension about me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm missing y'all. In other words, you can't see me do it, but you got to trust and know that it's me that's doing it. Maybe that's why my Solomon said it like this. Trust in the Lord. I need somebody to help me closer. With all the heart, here it is, and lean not to your own understanding. In other words, you don't know how God's going to do it. You don't know when God's going to do it. But if you've known God long enough, you know he may not do it the way you want him to do it. You expecting him to get you off Thompson Road. Turn on Ellis School Road. Turn on Harrison down the Broad Street. But God will take you around 330. Down 46. Exit on Decker Drive. Come down Wade Road. Turn on the other side. You don't like how God does it. But when he does it, you'll understand it had not been for the Lord on my side. Well, well, I need somebody to help me close and testify that when God does it for you, you'll learn how to tell somebody that I've trusted him before. I've tried him before. And the same way he did it then, he can do it again. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Have I got a witness here? He was the same God that touched my grandmother. He's the same God that watched over my mama. And if he did it for them, he can do it for me. I need some noisy folk here that know that I tried him before. And I found out can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. I need some noisy folk here to help me testify. I tried him before. I was sick in my body. Doctors couldn't do nothing for me. But when I turned it over to Jesus and stopped worrying about it while I was trying to figure it out, he had already worked it out. I said I was going to stay in verse 28, but I got to give you the shout part because Isaiah says he give power to the faint and to them that have no might he increases strength even the youth shall faint and be weary the young men shall run and utterly fall here's your shout to you but they that await all the Lord shall renew their strength shall mount up with wings as eagles shall rise and not be weary walk and not faint I gotta sit down now but help me close this sermon if you're not too mean to do it don't touch your neighbor this is your testimony I need five people in here you've been waiting on God for a long time I need five people in here you ain't seen it yet you ain't seen the miracle you ain't seen the promise you ain't ain't seen the breakthrough. If you're not too mean to do it, I don't need you to touch your neighbor, but do like David. In 1 Samuel 30, you gotta learn to encourage yourself. I need you to lift up your hands. Look toward heaven and tell the Lord, though you slay me, I'll trust you. Though you slay me, trust you. Lift up your hands. Tell the Lord, I won't let go. I won't let go. I won't let go until you bless me. I'm a hold on. I'm a hold on. If you don't hold on, give him the glory. Give him the honor. Give him the praise. Say on. Open. It goes open. There might be somebody here. He's the great.
greatest have you heard? I've been doing all this preaching just to let you know you ought to try God. He's the greatest. Well, I hope and trust you were blessed by that word on today. I hope something was said to help you as you walk with God and have a closer walk with him. There may be somebody who's watching me right now. You may want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I want to offer Jesus Christ to you right now. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe within your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. No ands, ifs, or buts about it. Jesus Christ died on the cross for you, and he rose with all power in his hand. If you believe that, the Bible says you shall be saved. It's as simple as praying a prayer. If you would like to, if you like to be saved and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's just as simple as praying a prayer. Pray this prayer with me, and as you confess it with your mouth, believe it within your heart. Let's pray. Repeat after me. Father, I come to you, a sinner. I repent of my sin. Forgive me. Come into my life. Save me. I believe in Jesus Christ. He is the Son of God. He died for my sins and rose from the grave. Father, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Lead me. Guide me. And I will live for you the rest of my life. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. My friend, my brother, my sister, if you prayed that prayer, Welcome to the body of Christ. I'm so happy for your decision. Now, the second thing you need to do, get into a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church. Are uh, you looking for one? I can think of one. It is the best church in Baytown where everybody is somebody. You can join by Carter Letter, Christian Experience from another church, or by Candidate for Baptism. We'd love to have you as our brother and sister in the Lord, and I would love to be your pastor. There are three ways you can join. One, you can call the church, 281-426-4223. Again, 281-426-4223. Leave us your name, your number, your address. Let us know you would like to become a part of Unity Missionary Baptist Church. Number two, you can email us. Email address is unitybaytown at gmail.com. Again, unitybaytown at gmail.com. Leave us your name, your number, your address, all pertinent information. We'll get right back in touch with you. You can also go to the website or any one of our social media outlets. The website is www.unity-baytown.org. Again, that's www.unity-baytown.org. Or you can go to Facebook, you can go to Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, inbox us, DM us. Go to our personal message space. We'd love to contact you and be in contact with you. We'd love to hear from you, and we'd love to receive you as our brother and sister in the Lord. Well, we got to go. We hope you enjoyed this worship experience. Enjoy the rest of your week. We'll see you this Wednesday night in Bible study. And until then, the Lord bless you and keep you. We love you. See you next time.